A Navy SEAL's chief is arrested for war crimes. Facebook drops its Glassdoor ranking from 1 to 7. This is Zoe, and this is the dark side of culture. This is Zoe Routh, and this is the Zoe Routh Leadership Podcast, where we look at everything culture and communication so that you can lead bold and boundless. That's what boundless leadership is all about. Makes sense, right? Because it's boundless. (laughs) So culture. If you think of leadership, then often you think about strategy. But I'm here to tell you culture drives everything. Culture is your people operating system. If you don't get that right then everything else falls apart. You've got to know and set the code for your culture. Some interesting things happening in the news lately, a sort of little heads up in the precursor there, uh, with Facebook. Facebook dropping its ranking from one to seven in Glassdoor. Now, Glassdoor is like uh, TripAdvisor for employers. And what the article said is that with all of its recent scandals, it's it's really fallen apart, but it dove a little bit beyond that into some of the background of what's happening at Facebook. The headline is Mark Zuckerberg's horrible people skills are ruining Facebook's culture, which is pretty harsh. I mean, can one leader really ruin the entire culture? I think that's a really good question to ask. And I was having a conversation with a leader about that recently. He's got a new chairman. He's a CEO and they've got a new chairman who's been in the job for about six months. And he said to me, you don't know how good your culture is until it starts to change. And you can really take a good culture for granted. I think that's completely true. Uh, I often find that leaders, if they have a good culture going on, they sort of sit smugly with that. Well, of course it's good because we're good. And then little things start to happen and all of a sudden they've got a big mess to clean up and they're sort of sitting there with egg on their faces wondering, how did it all happen like this? Well, there's lots of things that you can do in order to clean that up. But first, I want to speak to what my friend was saying about how leadership at the top can really make uh, a massive difference. And I think in this case, he was talking about how his new chair has a really different approach, different values and different ethics. And really, the big classic mistake is that he's putting results before people. He's prioritizing projects ahead of people. And one of the fundamental tools, I believe, in having successful culture, therefore successful strategy, therefore successful organizations, is that you put people first, people first, task second. Get that wrong, you've got a whole suite of problems. And the interesting thing is you don't have to spend that much time on the people stuff. It doesn't have to be excessive. I think you can use Pareto's principle here. 20% of your effort on people will deliver 80% of your results. And typically I find that a lot of leaders spend a lot less time on people than they should. And they wonder why they're having so many challenges, like people being undisciplined or people being recalcitrant or tension in the workplace, you name it. You got to put your people first, people first and task second. So let's get into this juicy article in Inc. That was, I'll put a link in the show notes, by the way, so you can read the whole thing. And the show notes will be at zoerouth.com slash podcast slash podcast dark side of culture. So in this Inc. article, um, where they blame Zuckerberg for the whole thing, really it's not, it's not all about Zuckerberg. And maybe he does have terrible people skills, but it's more than that. Whenever there's culture problems, there may be a leadership problem at the top. It may be the tone being set from the leader. And it's more likely, though, that it's about systems and shadow. So I want to explore those two concepts in this podcast, systems and shadow. So looking at what's happening at Culture, the article talks about, they introduced a system of stack ranking. Um, And what that means is, let me just see what they say. They call the bottom 15% of its people. And these are employees ranked as meets most deemed a low grade that puts future employment at risk. So basically they rank people in their, in a scale and depending on their performance, if they fall in the bottom 15%, see you later. And a lot of big ruthless corporates do this. You see this in a lot of legal entities at the, at the top end of town. If you're not performing, you're out of there. So it creates a really mm, negative cultural atmosphere, I suppose, like an anxious one. If you're towards the bottom of the pile, you're new and you're learning. 
I think what's also interesting in this article is they talk about uh, that there's this peer review piece creates an underlying pressure for Facebook employees to forge friendships with colleagues for the sake of career advancement. So you don't have people being authentic. They're like, I'm going to suck up to my mates because I want to make sure I rank according to my peers and I don't get the ax. So it's a, it's a interesting example of how you set up these systems because you think it's going to be a good way to uh, get, uh, get an assessment of people's performance because they're ranking their peers, right, instead of a manager doing it. And then they didn't consider the side effects of it. It's a pretty crappy system. So stack ranking happens across different organizations. Um, And they give a couple of examples in here. And interesting, in 2013, new CEO Satya Nadella of Microsoft replaced stack ranking with uh, with Microsoft's HR chief, Lisa Bramel, she said, would focus on teamwork and collaboration and employee growth and development. So instead of ranking people, they, their employment review system was now about teamwork and collaboration. There was no more curve. Um, and you can't just sort of get axed that way. So it's interesting. What kind of culture is being driven by the system of stack ranking? Oh, a pretty bad one. Um, so if you judge by Glassdoor's ranking, so employee dissatisfaction ratings increasingly um, is increasingly going up. And that's because there's an ethos in the company that says you got to pretend that everything is good. Um, you're not allowed to have dissenting views. I think that's a pretty powerful, interesting thing. So is it Zuckerberg? Um, well, in this article, it says that his Zuckerberg's people skills were so weak that he hired Sheryl Sandberg as chief operating officer. And they're saying that's a bad move. Now, it almost sounds sacrilegious to criticize Sheryl Sandberg because she's been hailed as the leading light for women at work in her book, Lean In, you know, and her story about being pregnant and starting at Facebook and how she sort of made it all come together. Um, But there you go. It hasn't always worked out that way. Um, And there's some things that are happening at Facebook that ain't so good. You know, the the use of uh, Facebook social media to promote hate, etc. Not that they're advocating it, but their inability to rein it in is problematic. Okay, so Facebook culture driving very bad results. It's lost 34% of its value uh, since its high in July 2018. That's pretty, that's pretty scary. So have you ever wondered, does culture really affect the bottom line? Ooh, yes, it does. It's pretty bad. So let's talk about this other story that came out, and I'll put a link in this one also in the show notes, about the Navy SEALs chief platoon who was arrested after many complaints and issues being raised about him for war crimes. And the story, as you read it, is pretty horrible. Uh, Some of the things that he's alleged to have done, stabbing a defenseless teenage captive to death. Um, He's a sniper, and he was seen supposedly picking off a school-aged girl and an old man from a sniper's roost. Uh, Indiscriminately firing at neighborhoods with rockets and machine gun fire. It sounds like Looney Tunes stuff. Far be it for me to understand the atmosphere and conditions of being at war. Um, It is an extreme situation where you are under fire and your life is at risk and the life of your mates are at risk. No doubt it does crazy stuff to your brain and maybe your decisions aren't always in line with protocol. What's interesting, though, in this case is what the case actually says about Navy SEALs culture. And I'm I'm always one to exemplify the Navy SEALs as an example of boundless teams. They're highly trained. They have each other's backs. And they're always willing to step in to support each other, which is the good side of its culture and its dark side. So what's happened in terms of this ethos of always you've always got each other's back is that it's really difficult to call people out of doing the wrong thing. It's seen as not the done thing. You're not a brother. Um, And that if you criticize one of your own, particularly a leader or or a senior leader, then you're not doing the right thing. You're bringing the whole team down. And uh, it gets really, it upsets the apple cart, basically, because a big part of Navy SEALs culture is about um, 
authority and following the rules and obeying your commanding officer. Like it's a pretty important piece in war that you don't sort of challenge your commanding officer's decisions while you're in the heat of the battle because all sorts of chaos can ensue from that and can put people's lives at risk. So when people see negative behavior like doing war crimes, how do you actually get over this culture which says you back each other and you look out for your fellow mate? Well, dark side of culture, right? So every positive aspect of a culture has a shadow side. So Facebook had its culling, its ranking system, and Navy SEALs seems to have ignored the dark side of its culture. So what the, this guy did, um, he's apparently a war hero. He, in 2018, he was given the Bronze Star for Valor Under Fire. So he's one of the most well-respected uh, senior SEALs and chiefs. So it seems difficult to, to accept the fact that he might have been involved in some pretty heady, horrible things that are outside the rules of engagement, outside of normal protocol. What do you do with that? Here's what I want you to do with it. I want you to not imagine yourself being a Navy SEAL, though I don't know if that's fun or not. Uh, in these conditions, I don't think so. I certainly admire a lot of what they do in terms of team dynamics. This dark-sided culture, though, this is what you can learn from it. I want you to list the aspects of your culture that you, if your team culture, your organizational culture that you think are fantastic, then look for the shadow. There's always a shadow. Every strength has a shadow side. So if team bonding and always looking out for your mate is a positive in Navy SEALs culture, the dark side is not being able to criticize, not being able to call people out, um, not being able to... Uh, call in the boundaries that are unacceptable. So that's the first thing I want you to do is look at the shadow side of your culture. Can you see where your positive things could go pear-shaped? What about Facebook's culture? The, the culture of we're happy and creative and dynamic to launching things before they were ready or not duly considering all the ramifications of what they're introducing. That's the dark side of creativity and innovation and entrepreneurialism. Um, the whole idea of being high performers, which led to the poor system of stack ranking, had an upside. You know, high performing cultures are, are about delivering results. That's a positive. The negative side is if you're not meeting up to scratch, you can go, you can become threatened, but your job can be threatened and this can be a, a negative thing. So check the shadow side of your culture. And the second thing I want you to do is have a look at the systems you have in place in your business and see what kinds of behavior results are, are happening as a result. I love the stack ranking, stack ranking example because it highlights what my friend Stacey Barr always points out is having measures in place that drive poor behavior. If you're going to get knocked out of the bottom, if you place in the, poor, in the bottom 15%, likely you will change your behavior to avoid that negative result. It, you could do something illegal. You could do something inauthentic, like sidling up to other people you don't really like to be their friends. So they'll rank you better. All sorts of ways that people try and game a system to avoid negative results or to seek positive outcomes. So do you have systems in place that can drive poor behavior? Ride it through and just imagine seeing what can happen as a result. So systems and shadow are two of the main things that can drive culture into despair. <laughs> Don't let that be you. By the way, I have a whole book written on this topic. It's called Loyalty, and you can get that for free. You can get the whole book, the ebook for free uh, at the, my download page, and it's in the link in the show notes. You can go to that, it's, and it has the Boundless Leadership Toolkit as a result, which gives you checklists and templates in order to set yourself up, your culture and yourself up for success. I'm really passionate about this. You know, we spend a lot of time at work and I think it's really important that we enjoy who we work with, how we work and our day-to-day -day lives. And we can't do that if our culture is going pear-shaped. So make sure that you do consider your culture. I love this uh, concept too, because I'm teaming up with Craig Rispin, one of my very favorite is people in the world. He's a brilliant guy. He's a futurist. He looks at what's coming in technology. And we've decided that we're blending the best of our two worlds together. 
I'm obsessed with culture and creating cultures that are worth belonging to. And he's obsessed with raising awareness about what's coming. He finds that with his clients, most of them are not aware of the future. So he works hard on that. And then the problem is implementing the projects together, because often the team dynamics are the thing that gets in the way of delivering projects that matter. And this is, this is the thing I discover with my clients is when we work on culture, uh, we can get that singing and humming, but they have no idea what's on the horizon. They have no idea of how to use technology to their advantage and be future ready. So we're teaming up and we're creating a whole project around this. And when it's ready, I'll let you know. But in the meantime, live well, lead well.